Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Second Swing Master Club Fitter. Today we're at the Minnetonka Tour Van. We're getting the chance to test some different game improvement clubs. I have Bob Norbrom. Thanks for coming in today. Uh, he's a sales associate at Second Swing Minnetonka Store. And I believe you're in the market for some new golf clubs. I am. I've been looking. I've had the current clubs for a couple of years now and felt that in the whole time I've been hitting them, I have lost some distance. Now I've been playing golf for about 54 years, it kind of tells you I'm about 72. I guess not about, but I am. So I'm looking for some more distance. I've lost considerable distance. I think I hit the ball too low where I play most of the time. I've got a couple par threes that have to carry water and I'd like to have all my balls back. Yep, and so. you, you, uh, you play at Bent Creek, correct? I do. So Bent Creek in Minnesota, uh, just to give you an idea of viewers, that course, um, the front nine, especially those greens, if you get over those greens, it can be nasty. So if you can't stop the ball fast enough, a lot of them slope back to front pretty severely, it can be challenging. So we want to get you a club that not only is going to go further, but can also stop on the green a little bit easier as well there too. So we've selected seven different models. These are the following models. So we've got the Mizuno Hot Metal, the Cobra Speed Zone, the Callaway Maverick Max, the Wilson D7, the Titleist T400, the Ping G710, and the TaylorMade Sim Max OS. So you're currently playing the Callaway Apex CF16, uh, 16, correct? Yep, that's yep. correct. So all of these models are gonna be a little bit more forgiving than your particular model. Your particular model's got 31 degrees of loft on it. Um, it's also gonna be a little smaller club head. So we're gonna put you into some little bit more game improvement cat irons here to test and see which one performs the best. Perfect. So you're currently playing the Recoil F2 shaft. That's so correct. That is a light flex golf shaft. So as we're testing all these seven models, we're gonna test them all with their kind of standard stock light flex shafts. We don't happen to have every single club head with the exact same golf shaft. So it's not gonna be a perfect test, but they're all gonna be weight, you know, we're gonna weigh around about that 50 gram range. Sure. Well, I like that. I, I'm of the, the feeling that the light flex is the way to go if we were even to think about test and regular flex, I think that puts me, we're borderline right now, or I feel I am, and to think I can swing faster, that ain't happening. So I think we're in the right shaft to test here. Yeah, we are. I've, I've seen you swing a few times. I've seen that that club speed is consistently being just under that 70 mile, mile an hour mark. That's usually when I start considering the difference between regular and light flex. So that's why we're gonna to continue to just kind of test with these. We're not gonna switch out golf shafts afterwards. We're just gonna do a straight comparison. We're gonna hit five shots with each club and then take a look at the numbers. Well, I'm excited because if I can pick up some yardage, you got a happy camper here. All right, well, let's see what we can do. Good. Okay, so Bob, we're gonna hit some shots with your current club. This is the Apex CF16. Okay, you've been playing that for about four years? Two years, actually. Two years, okay, yep. so the CF16. So you got, a, maybe, did you get it a couple years after the model came out? Yep. Okay. Perfect. So why don't you go ahead and hit four or five shots with your current club and we'll take a look at some numbers. Perfect. Now that one felt that good. That one was good. That one felt yeah. good. Nice. So Bob, you've been playing the Callaway Apex. Um, you've got that Recoil F2 shaft in there, correct? Correct. So that is kind of like a light flex golf shaft. Your club head speed when you were swinging those were right around about 68 miles an hour. 68 miles an hour, I'd still probably consider that into that light flex area. Okay. Um, so as we're testing all these other clubs versus yours, we're gonna stick with light flex. Okay. So light flex with all the other different models that we're gonna be testing. Perfect. Um, so 68 miles an hour. For you, if you were gonna pick up a little bit of distance, um, we would maybe try and pick up possibly a little bit more ball speed to generate a little bit more distance. Your club speed's probably not going to change a lot. Um, if we can get to 70, that would be great. But end of the day, I'm trying to fit you for your golf swing as opposed to force you to make major, make major swing changes. Okay. So when you were hitting your clubs, there were a couple of things that stood out to me. Your carry distance. Your carry distance was about 105 yards, going about 126 yards. So we'll notice that your landing angle was about 26 degrees. It's a little bit on the, on the lower side. 
um, that's going to make it a little bit harder for that ball to stuff on the green with those greens of firm. Now you mentioned that you like to roll the ball up for a lot of the time, right? I do. You do? Yeah. I, I feel I have to because I don't hit a high ball, so I play shorter knowing it's going to run out. Okay. And then when I have water between me and my landing spot, that's when I really get in trouble. That's when you really get in trouble. So if we happen to find a club that may fly a little bit higher with a little steeping landing angle, that would be a bonus for you, correct? That's what I'd really like to see. That's what you'd really like to see. We'd like to pick up carry distance and total distance, of course. Right. Um, so let's test some different models versus yours and see how they all perform. Perfect. So the first club I'm going to give you is the Mizuno Hot Metal. Can I come and get it? Yep. Same thing, we'll do five shots. All right. So you hit five shots with the Mizuno Hot Metal. How did that club feel? Felt a little more forgiving. I'll have to say, like, I, I tend to miss toward the toe. And that one, well, they were all pretty significantly right there. And I, they felt straighter. They, they definitely felt like I was hitting them higher. Yeah, and you were definitely hitting it a little bit higher. If we kind of look at the numbers here, if you take a look, your launch angle was about 15 point um, seven degrees. Wow. Um, and your landing angle was a little bit, little bit steeper. So who knows, 31 degrees with an average height of 38. That's quite a bit higher than yours. So we naturally, we picked up carry distance. We didn't really pick up any total distance, but carry distance to give you that stopping power essentially. So that's, that's important for us. Sure. Yeah. What about looks? Do you like the look of the club? I, I have no, it looks good. It looks good. It I looks know it's good. a little bit more of a game improvement iron. Um, now the loft is a little bit stronger than yours. It's one degree stronger than yours. So I'm not expecting too much of a difference. It's 30 degrees. Okay. So I'm not expecting too much difference in distance, just a little bit more forgiving. Okay. okay. So the next club is the uh, Cobra Speed Zone. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that one felt good. Nice. That was really good. So Culver Speed Zone. There was a couple there that carried over 120 yards. That really got your carry distance up. So that's really important in what we're trying to achieve by getting a little more distance for you. Right. How did that club feel? It feels lighter. It feels lighter to me, whether it is or not. But it just feels that way. But it really seems to come off the face with some jump. And I thought I was hitting it a lot higher, definitely a lot higher than mine, but even higher than the Mizuno, I thought. Yeah, so speaking of height, if we take a look here, it was one foot higher than the Mizuno hot metal on average. So 39 feet in the air, so 38. So very similar kind of landing angle. You'll notice on average, your carry distance was about six yards further. And wow. we'll notice total distance was 135. So you picked up a little bit of total distance with that club as well. Now the Cobra Speed Zone 7 iron, the loft is, 30, is 27 and a half degrees. So it is a little bit stronger loft, but the way the clubs are designed, it still essentially is gonna get that ball up in the air for you. So we notice the height was still good. A lot of times when we see these maybe stronger lofted clubs, my concern is can that person get that ball up in the, in the air? Well, it actually got up in the air a little bit better for you. So the way that the CG is designed on this model, it still allowed you to get the ball up in the air. So that sure. was really good. It's interesting, your club speed was not quite as fast as when you were hitting the hot metal. Um, so no, it was just a little bit less, but it was going further. So it was, your smash factor timing was way better. Wow. Check out that ball speed, 93 miles an hour on average. So that's really good. Wow. What, what do you think nice. of the, the top line on this golf course? That didn't, didn't get in my eye. I thought yep. when I first saw it that it would get there, but it, it doesn't bother me. It actually gives me a little confidence that yeah. I've got a little more mass behind the ball. So it didn't hurt my, yeah, my so thinking. It's, it's unique. The way that top line is essentially they're saving weight. So I talked about having a little stronger loft on this club. So with the weight kind of being re redistributed, that allows that ball, that ball to get up in the air. That's just why that top line kind of looks like that. It's just a, a weight saving procedure. So yeah. really, well, really good. That was good. Yep. Next club we're gonna hit is the Callaway Maverick Max. Okay. That was 
a little thin, but mm -hmm. better. Yeah, that was good. So how do the Callaway Maverick Max feel? Um, I, I, when I hit it, and without those thin ones in there, I, I, I like the feel coming off the face. Yep. It definitely felt that pop again that I don't have on my Apex. So on the same hit, I said these are gonna just, in my brain, gonna go farther. Yeah, so what's actually really interesting with the Callaway Maverick Max is this club's 30 degrees aloft. So it's not as strong aloft as, for example, the Cobra Speed Zone, the one you just hit before. But if you're gonna look at the numbers and even look on the right screen up here, you'll notice that your carry dis distance with that purple and blue circle was almost on top of each other. Right. So even though they're separated two and a half degrees apart with regards to the loft, the Callaway Maverick Max still carried pretty far. Your carry distance uh, was, let's see here, 114 and 115. So notice there was a little bit of difference, but not much. What's really interesting here with the Callaway Maverick Max is the landing angle and the height. So Callaway believes more loft for players that need help getting the ball up in the air is a good thing. So the way they've designed this club is looking down at you see the loft, you know the ball's gonna kinda get up in the air. But they didn't lose any distance by having that um, more loft on the golf club. Sure. So, yeah, so. Well it felt like it, it was getting up there and it was kinda effortless when I put them on the face, so a couple thin shots didn't work. Yeah. Um, what, like about, what about looks looking down at it? I don't mind the thicker top line. Again, I think it's given me a little bit of confidence almost, okay. seeing that yep. thicker top line. Some guys, mine, I went the opposite way, said I want a thinner top line, but I'm getting better results, <laughs> and I think maybe my brain's jumping on board. Yeah, I mean, there's I think, definitely something to be said when you're looking down at a small the club head. Yes, it looks very appealing on the eye to look right. at, but presenting confidence is definitely important. Knowing these, this club, if you're going to catch a little on the toe, a little thin, like you kind of hit a couple, and still get away with it, at the end of the day, that's really important. Sure. So a lot of people like the looks of blades, but a lot of the time they probably shouldn't be hitting blades. So. Well, that, that was me before. <laughs> so, Wilson D7. So we actually haven't done any previous testing with the Wilson D7 in the past. So this one's kind of a little bit of a wild card for us. We've had a lot of comments on our YouTube channel of, from viewers wanting us to test this club, so throw to the mix. So okay. I'm going to throw the Wilson D7 in the mix here. Perfect. That was better, but... Okay, so Wilson D7. That first shot you hit was really solid. Went 142 yards. So that was quite a lot more distance there. The other ones you didn't maybe quite hit quite as solid. Um, how did it feel? That solid one felt really good, and I think it'd be more a case of getting familiar with the club. That's what I'd say. That that really, I thought I really found something magic right there after that first swing. But uh, <laughs> and there's, yeah. there comes enters my golf swing. So yeah, well. That's the reason why we're testing game improvement irons. Sure. You know, we need a little bit of forgiveness. Everyone needs a, a little bit of forgiveness. This game is really challenging. Right. So, um, but you would notice even your miss hits, that was still pretty good. So we right. noticed that was still, uh, you know, see here, kind of still kind of around about the same area across the board, kind of around just a little bit larger dispersion circle than the Mizuno Hot Metal, but around about the same. So right. pretty good numbers with that one. Um, maybe on average your landing angle was just a little bit lower and height was a little bit lower. But if we were going to look at that first shot that you hit, number 25, you'll notice the ball speed 94 miles an hour. Um, that was the hottest ball speed that you have had yet. So yeah. that was really, really solid. Um, that club particularly, essentially the the loft is 28 degrees, so it's kind of in between a few of these other models that we've kind of been testing for, right. for seven iron. So, but if I could do that every time, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this next club is the Titleist T400. I'm interested about this because I actually haven't hit it yet. I haven't seen anyone hit it yet. So, new from Titleist. We'll see how this one performs. Okay.
Oh my. Oh wow. Oh my. Oh, there we go. Oh my. That's pretty that's, good. That's three oh my's with this club. Yep. Okay, so Titleist T400. There were a couple of oh my's when you were hitting this club. There was more than two. I think there were three oh my's and that last one was a semi oh my. Yes, so you definitely picked up distance with this particular club. Ball speed jumped, so we'll notice 96 oh, wow. miles an hour. Yep. Your club speed was a little bit faster. Now you did mention the stock uh, senior shaft here felt just a little bit lighter too, correct? Well, yes. the club felt just a little bit lighter. Um, so that was important because you were able to maybe pick up a little bit of club speed t there. But if we take a look here at the smash factor number, 138, the highest smash factor number, so efficiency. So even though you were swinging faster, it was still even more efficient. So sure. that was really important there to note. Um, if we take a look at how far you were hitting it, and check out the carry distance, 122 going 143 on average, with a landing angle over 30 degrees and height at 41 feet. Pretty good. That was, that was pretty solid right there. Um, how did that club look and feel? I, I noticed it seemed a little longer, but after I hit it, it, I guess it satisfied my brain on the side where it says, I can't hit this one on the toe and I didn't. Yeah, so a little bit, maybe more surface area there to help with those miss hits a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Uh, now this club is 26 degrees in loft, so it is a little bit stronger loft. But once again, the way these clubs are designed, the way the CG is moved around, Design is to get that ball up in the air, even low. Um, the lot that is a little bit strong lofted. So, seven irons still printed on the club. Yes, that loft is a little bit stronger, um, but it helped you get the ball up in the air and get that carry distance still. Aesthetically, for me, this one, I, I, it, the the longer head kept me thinking about this. The height, I felt like I was hitting it higher, and the numbers show I was hitting it higher. And, and the longer part, I can deal with that too. Yeah, you had especially the carry. You had one up here that carried almost 130 yards. Yeah. 129.1 going 146. That thing flew 52 feet in the air. Yeah. So that's going to give you that stopping power. So that carry difference there was about kind of 15 yards. It's better than really any other club today so sure. far. So that was that was really good. So 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 next is the Ping G710. Okay. Okay, so Ping G710, how did that club look when you're at address? It uh, looked fine. I think the dark, I couldn't see the top line. I mean, it just disappeared. Okay. All I saw was the face pretty much. Didn't bother me. I think the, the others gave me some confidence when I, I think I saw that wider top line. I don't know, it, it gave me a little more confidence. Okay. And yeah, so that black finish is designed to make the club look a little bit more appealing, a little bit easier on the eye, make it look like it's a little bit smaller club head. Um, your consistency with this club was the best out of, out of all of them so far. If you take a look at that red circle right there, you'll notice how it was kind of the smallest circle out of them all. We'll notice it didn't go quite as far as that T400 did, but it was nice and consistent, right. which is definitely important. Um, if we look here, you didn't hit it quite as high, lost a little bit, I mean, lost significant carry distance compared to the right. T400. Um, the Ping G710 loft is 29 and a half degrees, so it's three and a half degrees more loft on it, but that's not the difference of essentially one entire club. So, yeah, so I'd say the T400 was going a little bit further, flying a little bit higher. Right. When it comes to a consistency, it was important because it was kind of doing the same thing every single time too. So. Right. Right. So really comes down to what you want. Do you want to really pick up as much distance as you can, or do you want to maybe have something that does a little bit more consistent, but maybe not go quite as far? I like consistency, but even when you look at the title list, the consistency to me was a little bit right. Now that's probably me learning the club and yep. straightening that out. I, I like the distance. I mean, at 72 years old, I'll take all the distance you give me. 
<laughs> and I'll take that. Yeah, even still with that T400 going a little bit further, we'll notice that it was still a decent circle. When you club that, right. when the ball's gonna go further, the dispersion's just naturally gonna be a little bit longer. Right, right. Okay, so last club, the TaylorMade Sim Max OS. Okay. All right. Okay, so Bob, you hit the TaylorMade Sim Max OS. There were a couple of pretty good swings in there with that club as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Felt that way. Yeah, there was a couple that carried over the 120 mark, just kind of like with the T400. So we have a little competition when it comes to distance. And Sim Max OS definitely went a little bit further as well, and so did the T400. How did the Sim Max OS look at a dress? Uh, that looked fine. It looked fine? Yeah. The, in comparing it to the T300 or 400, it just seemed that the 400 was hard to miss. I mean, okay. it just that's the way it was filtering into my brain. This one I did, did when I hit it on the face, <laughs> it went well. Yeah, it, it definitely did go a little bit further there. We'll notice right. the flashing circle up here. That's the some Max OS, that, right. I guess, the pink circle. Um, it was it's definitely giving some competition with, with the T400 with regards to distance. Right. Your bull speed was about almost two miles an hour less than the T400, but you would check out this efficiency. So you might be getting a little tired here, and I thank you so much for swinging so many golf shots today. But it was interesting, even though the club speed was a little bit less, your efficiency was really, really good with the Simmax OS. So sure. that was really solid. Um, if we scroll across to the right here, we know it's carry 120 going 139. So pretty close. So it was just a little bit shorter. We, have, we had those two with the T400 that went just a little bit further, but this was a close second with regards to distance. Sure. Now the loft is 27 degrees on this club. So just kind of like the T400 is a little stronger lofted. Once again, it's kind of designed with that CG to allow get that ball up in the air. This is because it's a stronger lofted golf club. It's not going to fly lower. So sure. your, your height with that one was 41 feet in the air, just like the Titleist T400, which was also 41 feet in the air. And, and but both of them were tops and all of them I hit, which I got my height and I got my yep. distance. So I'm looking for both of those. Yeah, so definitely be able to pick you up a little bit of distance from where you were at with your club. You were 102 going 128 to push in 120 going 140, essentially, with, with both those two in distance. So picked up a full club. Picked up a full club. So I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So first thing, good job on keeping that swing nice and consistent for us in, a, in this testing purpose. Uh, your club speed ranged from 68 miles an hour to 69.7 on average. So plus or minus not even two miles an hour. That's almost as, that's probably almost better than me. So <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty good there. So thank you so much for keeping that swing nice and consistent. Um, speaking of club speed with yours, we're about 68 miles, miles an hour. Um, we did hit 30 or 40 swings here this morning to get you warmed up first. So we, you were warmed up by the time you were hitting your current club with regards to these numbers. Um, if we scroll up really quickly, check out the Titleist T400. That one had the fastest club speed at 69.7 miles an hour. You did mention to me that it did feel just a tad lighter, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that might be part of the reason why you're just able to pick up a little bit of club speed. Um, that club head being a little bit longer may have presented a little bit more confidence to you as well to feel like you can maybe go after it a little bit. But club speed, very, very similar. It's going to help us diagnose kind of ball speed and smash factor. Sure. So ball speed is the next thing we look at. So if we look at your current club, we're about 91.3 miles an hour. So any gains from there, we're going to probably pick up a little bit of distance. So if we were going to scroll up, we'll notice the Cobra speed zone. 92.9 so that was kind of the first one that went a little bit further than your club um, if we kind of keep scrolling up here we've got the Titleist T400 and the TaylorMade Sim Max OS those two gave us the highest ball speed T400 96.2 miles an hour that was the hottest face that one actually went the furthest as well sure. so more ball speeds going to equal more distance with the TaylorMade Sim Max OS, notice your club speed was about the same as with your gamer, but the ball speed retained. 
So your smash factor was the most efficient. So with the Simax OS, 139 smash factor, very, very good for a 7 iron. So that's pretty hot. T400 was 1.38. Yours was 1.34. So you were hitting yours pretty efficiently. Just wasn't going quite as far. Right. Um, so you said you would love to pick up a little bit of distance, so we're able to kind of pick up a little distance. The interesting thing with your current club is the launch angle, 10.9 degrees. So it's a little bit on the low, lower side. That club, Kelly Apex, is not as forgiving as some of these other models. Right. And these other de models designed to get that ball up in the air a little bit easier. We were able to get your launch angle up. So if we take a look, if we scroll up, essentially 15 degrees to... Uh, yeah, basically around 15 or 16 degrees with every single model with regards to the launch angle. So that is a bonus. So that's really, really good. Um, spin. So the interesting thing with spin rate is if we have a little bit less loft on the golf club, usually spin rate numbers might, may drop. So your spin was 4,800 RPMs. What I want to do is just kind of jump to the strongest lofted one here, Taylor Titleist T400, 26 degrees. Notice the spin was kind of 4,500, so it was a little bit less spin. The Sim Max OS actually was a little bit higher, even though it's a little stronger lofted club. Sure. So because you were getting a little bit more spin, you were going to maybe have a little bit more stopping power. Um, so your club was stopping within about 26 yards once it hit the ground. Now that can be a challenge, especially if those greens are firm. That's off the green. That's off the green, yeah. So you, if there's a bunker in front of the green or if there's water you've got to carry, you're probably going to be about off the back edge of the green there sure. too. So um, the nice thing is some of these other ones were a little bit closer together. So with regards to your carry and total distance. So if we look at, you know, Titleist T400, this was about 19 yards. So that's less. Right. Um, if you look at Cobra, it was 20. Mizuno was about 16, so I gave you a little bit more stopping power. Um, Wilson D7 was about 22, so it's kind of similar to yours. Yep. Um, Ping was about 20, and TaylorMade was about 19. So 26 yards we was, the, was the biggest difference between carry and total distance. And that was the, my club. That was your club, yes. So. The reason why we're able to get that ball to stop a little bit faster is related to your landing angle and your peak height. Sure. So your, with your club was coming in about 22.4 degrees. It's pretty low. It's gonna make it kind of challenging. Your height was only 24 feet in the air. If we, the good news is all of these clubs gave us a higher landing angle kind of ranging from about 30 degrees, um, so about 28 degrees to about 32 degrees. So all of the clubs, the way they're designed, even though they are stronger lofted, did fly higher and did come into the green steeper. Sure. So we were able to pick you up distance with a little bit stronger loft, but because the club's designed with the CG the way it is to get that ball to get in the air, we didn't sacrifice any stopping power. So that's a bonus. Um, the highest height was the TaylorMade Sim Max OS and the Titleist T400. Those two um, essentially did stop the, the fastest. The total distance, the T400, 143. Carry distance, T400, 123. Um, Sim Max OS, 120, 139. So those two were all pretty similar. Um, so I know you liked a couple of the different models here. Um, Great job today, by the way. That, that was Thank awesome. You. I really appreciate you being able to hit all, that, all those golf swings. This was an interesting test for us. Um, so we'll be able to kind of cover all the different clubs. Which two clubs would you say that you were maybe you, you were kind of your favorite after today? I just unequivocally, the TaylorMade and the Titleist. TaylorMade and Titleist? stood yep. out. Just absolutely stood out. If I were to put a one and a two, the Titleist one, the TaylorMade two. Yeah, so that, yeah, I, I love that. Um, I love the fact that they were going a little bit further and it was still, still were staying pretty straight. Yep. So that's this green flashing circle here. Um, and then we've got the Simax OES, that was that purple circle there. Um, and then if we're looking at dispersion, the Ping G710 was probably the tightest dispersion. That was that red circle there, but it didn't go quite as far and you're telling me, hey, outside, I can probably figure that out. So bonus today that we were able to pick you up a wow. decent amount of distance. So we went from 102 carry to 128. 
to a 120 carry going about 140. So, so pick you up, that pick was, you that up. That was my goal today. Yeah, pick you up about a club, a club and a half of distance. So good job today. Perfect. Thank you.